Oh boy. Do we got a fucking doozy, alright? This one is gonna be, let me fix you guys up there. Get you nice and lined up. Let me retie my hair so I can look nice for ya. Alright, don't you know, I'ma go hit the bubbler like a fucking Uh, first of all, as your editor, I do not, uh, like the fact that you think people from Wisconsin, like myself, are uh, just because we call it a bubbler and you want to lengthen it by calling it a drinking fountain. If anything, you're the weirdos, and Wisconsin is probably the most normal place, although we pay for air and parking on our own fucking residential streets. But that's just something, you know, that probably makes no sense. We probably... Actually, our politicians are... No, I'm sorry. I just think that people from Wisconsin are inherently less superior. Anyway... Uh, so today, guys, we do have a real doozy for you, and it's called Frank and Hooker. Now, if you don't know, Frank and Hooker is one of these schlocky films. I don't remember if it was from the 80s or 90s. Let me go ahead and double check quick. So it came out in 1990, and it had Patty Malin, James Lorenz, uh, Joseph Gonzalez, and a few other people. And this movie was an absolute fucking fever dream once again. Way more of a fever dream than most other things that we've seen. Now, I don't know, this seems to be kind of part of this underground schlock bad horror type thing where the guy from Frankenhooker we actually saw in Troll 2. I believe it was. And so there's various things that that seem to be all adding together for me right now. But the most important part is that I just want to talk to you about this film today. So Frankenhooker is exactly what it sounds like. It is a Frankenstein hooker. Got any money? Essentially, we start with this guy who's an absolute fucking weirdo, although, albeit, the shots are really fun. You see him playing with his brain with an eye in it, and you don't really know what it does, and he's trying to get it to follow him. Jesus, that's it. That's it. That's right. Now follow my hand. Look at the hand. Just follow the hand. He finally does so, and then it's shown that he's, like, literally just doing this in the kitchen while his, like, girlfriend's mom is trying to cook. And so it's all kind of very wacky and zany. Jeffrey, mm -hmm. be a doll and pass me the ketchup. Sorry. Thanks, hon. And over the top, and it had just this really nice schlocky feel to it. Then what happens is he's basically an inventor. He goes around and tries to create new things and does all sorts of stuff. He wanted to be a doctor, however, but he got thrown out multiple times from multiple different schools, so he had to give up on that. Which, I mean, hey, yeah, this guy seems absolutely fucking insane, so it would make sense that he wouldn't quite be able to. Uh, go and finish a, a doctor degree. That's, that's it. Okay, okay. So what happens though is he creates a lawnmower that is remote activated, and essentially his girlfriend shows it off to her father because that's who they're bestowing the gift upon, and tragedy strikes when this absolutely fucking stupid person, uh, the girlfriend, stands right in the middle of the, the way, or right in front of of this damn automated lawnmower and gets her ass chewed up. So when you want it to go, you just press this. You're on your way, Jeff. Don't stand in front of it. And listen, I would not mind being that lawnmower. Bitch had cake. You feel me? She had the whole bakery, as they like to say.
I'm not trying to say anything more than that. Now, the whole thing was super zany, and it, again, had, like, a lot of over-the-top blood, which I thought was really fun. It was shot really schlockily, and I loved how they kind of cut away and did kind of this almost psycho-type thing to show, like, her being torn up, but also not quite showing it, so that way you can make it look as realistic as possible. I think a lot of the props here as well were just really well made. Like I mentioned, that brain in the jar is something that will totally stick with me forever. And then the movie just gets so much more insane. To us, to new beginnings. Cleanse the palate now. There we go, nice and slow. That's very good. That's it. That's it. Essentially, the guy whose girlfriend is now dead, he, the crazy inventor, decides that he's going to bring her back. He's going to do so because he saved her head in some sort of estrogen serum. How are you feeling? Sorry, I'm late. I was talking with Ma. You know, she yaps. Which I don't know why that would work. Maybe you could go with like the cryo freezer method, or like you, they had that stuff that you can put in to replace blood in the veins that freezes the body. I, I listen, I'm no fucking scientist, but there had to have been some better option than this. Uh, and so apparently he kept that, but he wasn't able to get all of her other parts. So, in order to piece her back together, which he needs to do within a, a week because there's a big lightning storm coming. And as you can see from this lovely map right here, we have some very exciting weather arriving here in about two days. More thunder and lightning and electricity than you've ever enjoyed before. <laughs> very spooky, very spooky. And just right for you mad doctors out there. <laughs> he has to go find some body parts. So he goes around and he goes to some hookers. Hey, you! Need some company? Are you lonely? Come on, come on! Now, it's so funny seeing this dude who's clearly very nerdy interacting with these hookers and he just has a load of money so they're super fucking happy to be there. And uh, they basically get told, hey, I need some body parts. And she's like, I got all the body parts you're looking for. Which is the weirdest fucking thing ever because clearly like, she doesn't know she's committing to literally having her body taken from her it's a, a weird consent message going on underneath there i think you just take a couple deep breaths and relax and tell me what you want uh well, i'm looking for a couple of girls uh, i have the right uh, nice parts I, I i'm looking for a lot of good parts However, she goes and she gets all of her friends and they end up having a party. In this party, he plays doctor and tries to figure out whose body is the best. And that girl, he was going to like allegedly have sex with, but in reality, he was going to kill to use her body with his ex-girlfriend's or dead girlfriend's head. Hey, hold still. Uh, this reminds me of St. Louis Arch. However, throughout this process, he has to deal with this, like, muscle man named Zorro who looks like he has done way too many fucking roids and definitely hits gold gems in, like, West Hollywood. Them hoes are fucking with me. She's going on too long. That's all I'm trying to say is he's, like, he must be known in some places for tapping his foot. But that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and so essentially this guy is the one who's protecting these girls, so to speak. He does a terrible fucking job though, because this guy, kid has money and he's like, he doesn't question anything about the kid and how the kid is from the suburbs and all of a sudden he's in the city looking for hookers and et cetera, it's very weird. Uh, and he's like, yeah, sure, you can do that. Now in between this, I need to make a disclaimer. This is not how drugs work. But basically, our main character creates what he calls super crack. This super crack will get the job done a lot quicker. And without any pain. Of course, it may get a bit hot. Because crack is killing the community. This crack shit's killing them! 
So therefore, if you create some sort of super crack, then everybody will die from it. And he just tries to kind of excuse it by saying, oh, well, it's okay, they're just hookers, who gives a shit? I mean, it's, it's not like I'm committing murder. I'm not killing anybody. The crack is what's gonna kill them. Huh? Hell, it's killing them already. They're just minorities, nobody cares, nobody will miss them. You know, they're just druggies. They don't have to take it. Nobody has a gun to their head. If they don't want to do it, they can just say no. It's like, dude, they're human beings. You're a real fucking monster. All right, guys, so so real quick. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, what the fuck? What the? What, what, what is that? What the fuck? That's right. It's an ad. All right, guys. This is an ad. Have you ever wanted to get uh, a part of a film club where you can discuss various films with peers of, of like-minded individuals that are into cinema? Have you ever wanted to get uh, you know extra content and be uh, early to the show when it comes to the movie reviews here on this channel? Or with uh, you know seeing the newest trailers, getting updated with the various news in the movie industry? Well, then you should check out the Smoke and Sessions membership. Go ahead and uh, click either the join button below or you can go into the description and click the link at the top of the description and it'll take you to more information about each of our categories and what they can do for you now back to the video however once he gets to the party and he goes through and starts trying to check for body parts he finds that he can't really choose the right one so he tells the women hey you know you can have the money because they're like where the fuck's the money so he's like the money's in their bag over there and in the bag they happen to find uh the super crack wow holy shit Now, he changed his mind on doing this whole thing, so he didn't want them to die from the super crack, so I have no idea why he would go and he would, like, fucking tell them to go look in this bag where there's obviously a load of crack and there are a bunch of literal crack whores. They're, of course, going to do the crack, and I don't fucking blame them. Crack is a fun thing to do. However, uh, from there, what happens is probably the most insane part of the entire thing basically they all start smoking crack they're partying and then they start all exploding one by one and i mean literally fireworks fourth of july rodeo music explosions every single hooker <laughs> It was absolutely psychotic and glorious all at the same time. The explosions, the prosthetics were fantastic. They were obviously very absurd and I think like mannequins for the most part, but I fucking loved how just so stupid it fucking was. Um, so then after they all end up blowing up, uh, he's like, well, now I'm a fucking murderer. So he's like, no, guys, I'm going to put you all back together, which, again, their bodies exploded. Their whole bodies are not there, so you'd have to go kill more women to bring those women back. But he places their body parts that he can get inside a trash bag. Just be quiet. Relax. It's going to be all right. And then somehow in the process, Zoro gets knocked back by an explosion, and I guess he doesn't die, but he gets knocked out for some reason. <laughs> That's very weird. Takes the body parts, takes it back to the place, puts them all in the estrogen shit. So far, complete fucking madness. Nothing really is making sense. I, I don't know. We've got hookers. We've got super crack. We've got people exploding left and fucking right. And then he goes ahead and he stitches together the Franken hooker. He takes like the best torso with the best breasts and the best pussy and the fattest ass and all this other shit. And he puts his girlfriend's head on top. For as long as I live, you'll be safe. Whoa, whoa! 
from there, what we end up happening is he sends her up to, into the heavens like an angel to be struck down by lightning, which should have just fucking fried her entire body, actually. That shouldn't work that way. But up to the heavens, and the lightning comes down, and it lives. You know what I'm saying? It lives. He brings it back down. But the twist is, it's not his girlfriend. It's just a, a, a Franken hooker. It's a girl it's, uh, that has the girlfriend's head, but is literally like uh, has the thoughts of a hooker and is constantly going around asking, "Do you have money? Got any money? You know, do you want to have a good time? Want a date? Going out? Looking for some action?" Uh, and then basically knocks bro out because he doesn't have any money, which I'm like, she's I'm, I'm I respect it. Like she's trying to get her bag. And I respect that. Uh, and so from there, she goes around, starts offering people sex. People are freaked out. But there's one guy <coughs> that kind of looks like Danny DeVito that definitely was, like, way too into her, which, like, he clearly had, like, a necrophilia thing. Oh, yes, God, yes, yes, take me, yes. Because she was, like, blue. And even when she lifted her shirt, she had, like, blue nipples so uh he was like oh yeah i want to have a good time i have some money so they go to this hotel they start fucking and apparently her pussy has such magical super crack power still kept within it that her pussy releases steam that gets him high and kills the man and explodes while she rides him oh. Oh. wonderful it's insane and he has this extreme bliss on his face afterwards it was like really fucking disturbing although very fucking funny because hey at least the man died doing what he loved and i absolutely respect that the explosion once again was really good and i think also by the way like the prosthetics of the frankenhooker looked good like the whole stitches and all that looked pretty solid from there what we end up having is uh you know our main character finds her gets her back to the the you know house and she ends up going uh or uh then when they're there zoro the guy who you know ran the hooker ring uh and all of his hoes are dead <laughs> because of explosions uh basically he goes and he's going to shoot uh you know the the, the our main character which he does proceed to kill the main character and you're alive and i love you elizabeth now more than ever, I love you. And we're going to spend the rest of our lives together, me and you. And then I think he dies somehow. I can't quite remember the ending uh, fully. What I do remember, however, is that our main character does die. And then the next scene we get is the final scene where essentially uh, the uh, Frankenhooker, who is now has the thoughts of the girlfriend for some reason, like she got slapped upside the head and that changed her entire personality. The lawnmower, oh God, what's happened to me? And so essentially she read all of his notes and did all of the things necessary to bring him back to life. He, she did so by placing his head on top of a hooker. Dead? How did what? Well, you kept very good notes, and of course I used living parts. Living parts? What do you mean living parts? Holy shit! And he then was a uh, male head with a female hooker body. It was absolutely nonsensical. The entire thing had nothing to say about society at large. I think there was a little bit of a message about crack being bad and crack kills, but otherwise it was just a very schlocky, over-the-top exploitation film that I think really serves its purpose as going like way out there and just really throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, overall, I would rate it three out of four. I thought it was really, uh, I thought there was a lot of really funny parts, even though it didn't make much sense and it kind of just felt like 
an experience. You're just kind of experiencing what this our main character experiences. Uh, I, I thought it was a cool way to do it. What do you guys think? Did you guys see this movie? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Let me know in the comments down below. I definitely enjoyed the shots as well. I thought that they were done pretty decently. The blood and gore was probably one of the best parts, but definitely the explosion takes the cake. But what was your favorite part? Also, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That'll pop up during the outro. And the rest of our links are down in the description, too. We have gaming sessions for gaming content, movie and smoke sessions for movie content, Crazy Rocky for variety content, and the Tri Podcast for our podcast channel. <laughs> I almost died there. All right, guys. I'll see you all in the next Oh, we have a Discord. Uh, you can join that, too. All right, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Just to open up a new